about carbohydrates. Everybody likes carbohydrates, I think, sugars and their various derivatives. And so the very simplest description of these compounds in a chemical sense is polyhydroxyaldehydes and ketones. So the things we learned about from aldehydes and ketones earlier um, will be applied here and there will be compounds that are full of hydroxy groups, namely alcohols, just as you can see with this particular diagram at the bottom of the screen. Um, so the part that I want to cover in recordings, because we won't be taking time for them in class due to scheduling issues, um, including weather, um, will be the first two. This first recording will be the one about with the introductions to carbohydrates. The learning objectives from the chapter that we need to tackle um, here include ca classifying carbohydrates by functional group, by their number of carbons, and how you label them according accordingly, which you'll find not too complicated. Um, having done IUPAC, this is somewhat simpler, actually. And we will gradually learn about identifying the D and L isomers, in other words, handedness. But that will be the second recording, not this one. What are the different kinds of carbohydrates? Well, um, another name for them is saccharides. You may have heard of polysaccharides, maybe, and monosaccharides and disaccharides. Polyhydroxyaldehydes and ketones have exactly what it sounds like, aldehyde or ketone groups, and a lot of OH groups. So these two here have aldehydes. This one has a ketone. And the, every other carbon, in most cases, will have an OH group, an alcohol group on it. The monosaccharides are the simplest ones, the carbohydrates that cannot be broken down into simpler sugars by hydrolysis. If you do any, break them down further, they no longer fit the definition of a carbohydrate. So there are three examples of simple sugars shown here, and two of them are aldose, and the third one is a ketose. There are four specific biologically significant monosaccharides that you simply will want to memorize. This is a memorization exercise, and we'll, there will be a variety of ways to work on these, but I'll tell you right now, those are the ones. Um, glucose, ribose, fructose, and galactose, they're all shown as their D forms. What that means is going to be explained later. And how we're going to classify each of these will be important. Um, what you're looking at to recognize them, at least from this um, representation, is the pattern of the OH groups as you go down the chain of carbons with the aldehyde or ketone group being shown at the top. Excuse me. Um, the OH groups are going to be either left or right of this carbon chain. And so the pattern for glucose is right, left, right, right. And once you have that one figured out, the other ones have relationships to it in general. So right, left, right, right sounds really goofy. It sounds like weird marching orders probably. Um, but it's what the pattern is for glucose. Um, ribose is simpler. It's only got five carbons. Glucose is six carbons. Ribose has five carbons. And all of its OH groups are shown on the right for a specific reason when it is a D ribose. All of these are going to be D. You'll see why gradually. Um, D fructose is closely related to D glucose. If you look at the part in the round rectangle, the part below the ketone in fructose is precisely the same as the lower portion of glucose. So the left, right, right pattern fits. It's just the top of the molecule has a ketone and then a CH2OH group. Um, one of those is on each end of that molecule. So notice that there are two of these type groups in that molecule. We'll talk about those more. Um, the last one that you need to know is galactose. And galactose, again, if you look at the pattern of the um, OH groups going down the carbon chain, and this, they're shown with numbers here, but it's turned sideways for a reason um, that was just convenient for that diagram. The pattern is going to be right, left, left, right. So there's two on the right and the opposite for the middle two. So that'll be a pattern that we will learn to work with. But again, there's some similarities to glucose. In other words, it's only different from glucose in one spot. The only one that's different from glucose is the third of the ones that we're describing. So that's an important difference to distinguish the two. More on those later. OK. So just as an um, outline of the topics that I will be wanting you to know from this chapter, the ones that I will in cover in this recording will have to do with these first um, two topics for the carbohydrates.
uh, which classes they have, and how we name them in that regard. So disaccharides and polysaccharides are what you get if you take more than one monosaccharide, put them together. Um, the polymers that we see as polysaccharides are going to be formed by having an acetal formed between two sugars. A hemiacetal plus an alcohol back in chapter 16 re results in making an acetal. The definition of an acetal, sometimes we forget, is a uh, carbon that has two ether groups, OR groups, on the same carbon. Um, we'll see more about these two also. The disaccharide then is exactly what it sounds like, two monosaccharides, polysaccharides, many. And the polysaccharides in our diets are the things that we describe as complex carbohydrates, things that are good for us. They have a variety of um, vitamins associated with them. So things you need to keep in mind to stay healthy. We will describe and get acquainted with um, the, the characteristics of some of the disaccharides and a few polysaccharides. Just as a reminder, how do these hemiacetals and acetals come about? This was a review from our uh, chapter on aldehydes and ketones. Um, which I guess is actually chapter 15 in this current textbook. Um, and so it's important in carbohydrate chemistry, but there's OH groups, alcohol groups, and carbonyls in the same molecule that can re bend around to form a hemiacetal intramolecularly. And when that occurs, it is a very stable arrangement. And so the resulting molecule has a hemiacetal with an OH and an ether on the same carbon, and that is what we call a hemiacetal. In the context of glucose, a specific example, just so you can see it coming, um, it exactly has that. There's an aldehyde and a hemi um, alcohol in the same molecule, reminding you that there was a partial plus attracted to a partial minus that creates the new bond for an OH, and then a second partial minus from the OH of the alcohol group with a partial plus of the carbonyl, resulting in the OR linkage, which we call the ether group. And that's exactly what's happening in glucose. You make one bond here and another bond there, and you end up with an OH and an ether on the same carbon, the carbon that was the carbonyl. So there's a cyclic hemiacetal form for glucose. So yeah, that looks a little bit daunting, but don't panic, we'll, come, we'll be working on it more. And you may have seen this diagram in your homework. Yep, that looks familiar. It's an exercise in identifying chiral carbons. We'll talk about those um, in a lot more detail. So how do we name these funny compounds? We're no longer using IUPAC names, but there's a method to it that is somewhat generalized and keeps it from being too complicated. The endings are all going to be O-S-E. So if you've heard of glucose and fructose and sucrose, that makes sounds like sugars to you. You have hit the right pattern. The O-S-E ending tells us that these things are sugars. The first way we'll classify them or describe them or name them is by their types of car carbonyls. So surprise, surprise, if you have an aldose, it's going to have an aldehyde in it, and a ketose has a ketone in it. There are specific examples for each of these. The aldoses and ketose examples in this particular um, diagram are not, um, they're very generic because the OH groups are on the rest of the carbons or the number of carbons are not shown and it's not um, necessary for this particular naming. Do notice, and sometimes people overlook this, that whenever you have a ketose, you're going to have two ends that are CH2OH, and an aldose only has one of them. And so that's one way to recognize a ketose that's different from an aldose. Common sugars that are aldoses include glucose and galactose that I showed you a little bit ago, and mannose is another one. We'll see all of these um, with various examples as we go. Then, um, so taking that idea, what do we have for these two sugars and why do we call them what they do? So mannose and ribulose. Well, I just told you mannose was an aldose, right? And so why is that an aldose? Well, there you go. There's your aldehyde. And so mannose is, in fact, an aldose. What about ribulose? Well, got to look at that structure. Is there an aldehyde or a ketone in there? Well, sure enough, that's a ketone. And notice that this is the CH2OH group on both ends. That means you put an OH group on every other carbon besides the aldehyde or ketone. And so the ketose, this is a ketose if you're looking at ribulose. Nope, you don't have to know that one. It's just an example. Mannose either. They're just examples here. OK, smiley face on the top of the screen means this is a challenge. If you were doing this in class, I'd ask you to participate in some fashion to help me um, describe these things. 
So we can name these carbohydrates or simple sugars by the number of carbons in their chain. And guess what? Hexose, pentose, tetrose, triose are quite exactly what they sound like, six, five, four, or three carbons. And we can name those things quite simply if we can count. And then if you can use that in combination with the aldehyde or ketose, aldose or ketose designation, then you get a longer name like aldohexose or ketohexose or aldo something else, pentose, etc. So let's look at the examples on the screen and try to decide which categories fit for each of these carbohydrates. Um, the names will be revealed gradually. So glucose, let's see, the leftmost compound here, I would suppose that looks like an aldose. You got that part figured out, right? So let's put triangle next to it when it's an aldose. How many of these are aldose? Also ribose, right? And then apparently the keto hexose, well, I'll just put a square there. That would be a ketose. So fructose is a ketose. Got it. From there, we have to also name them according to the numbers of carbons. Um, remembering, and we'll talk about this more, that aldehydes are always numbered starting with their aldehyde carbon. So one, two, the carbonyl carbon is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. For glucose, one, two, three, four, five. For ribose, one, two, three, four, five, six. So glucose and fructose are in fact hexoses, and ribose would then be a pentose. And so glucose, yep, is in the aldohexose list. Mannose was on the previous slide. That was also a six carbon sugar that's an aldehyde. And the ketohexose here is fructose. And those names are all revealed as well. Notice these all come directly from your text. You can look for them again there. All right, so how would you classify this molecule? This is the group participation icon up there in the top of the screen. Eldose or ketose, first question to ask there. So I would hope you can recognize this in the same fashion we did on the previous slide and say, yes, this is an aldose. And how many carbons does this have? So start counting. I'll, carbon number one is always the carbonyl. One, two, three, four. Make my tool right. Um, five, six. So this would be, to put the two names together, an aldohexose. Do you have to know which one it is? Nope. Um, can I tell you which one it is? Um, not offhand. There's a lot of different ones, and I don't recognize this one at the moment. I'd have to look it up. All right, here's another one. Class participation. Think out loud. Pause the, re pause the recording and think of, see if you can figure it out. So it's going to be classified how? Well, there's two categories, aldo or keto. Let's look at this diagram and decide first what it is. If you can pay attention to the ball and stick model, I hope you can see that there is your carbonyl. And if it's on the top of the molecule, it's going to be an aldose. So it's not the keto choices. And then from there, you just have to count the number of sugars or carbons. And that looks like three. So it should be an aldotriose. Simple enough. And if you know about carbohydrates well, they all end in OSE. And so there's some really dangerous ones called comatose that is overindulged in by students in afternoon classes. And there's absolutely no known antidote. Beware of that one, my colleague. Dr. Ballantyne was always warning students about comatose, but my kids came up with more examples because if you are um, a kid, you can think of Cheerios and Oreos and Nachos and Tacos and Legos and Dinos and Hugos, especially if you live in Grand Forks, etc. Oh my, silliness galore. We could have silliness sometimes. All right. Um, let me pause this, let end this recording here, and we'll continue with the next recording talking about handedness.